The Marco Polo Bridge Incident, also known as the Lugu Bridge Incident or the Double Seven Incident, was a July 1937 battle between China's National Revolutionary Army and the Imperial Japanese Army. Since the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931, there had been many small incidents along the rail line connecting Beijing with the port of Tianjin, but all had subsided. On this occasion, a Japanese soldier was temporarily absent from his unit opposite Wanping, and the Japanese commander demanded the right to search the town for him. When this was refused, other units on both sides were put on alert, and with tension rising the Chinese army fired on the Japanese army which further escalated the situation, even though the missing Japanese soldier had returned to his lines. The Marco Polo Bridge incident is generally regarded as the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War. Chapter 1, Name In English, the battle is usually known as the Marco Polo Bridge incident. The Marco Polo Bridge is an 11-arch granite bridge, an architecturally significant structure first erected under the Jin and later restored by the Kanshi Emperor in 1698. It gained its western name from its appearance in Marco Polo's record of his travels. It is less often referred to as the Battle of Marco Polo Bridge. It is also known as the Lukushao, Lugao Kao, or Lugu Bridge incident from the local name of the bridge, derived from a former name of the Yongding River. This is the common name for the event in Japanese and is an alternate name for it in Chinese and Korean. The same name is also expressed or translated as the Battle of Lugu Bridge, Lugao Kao, or Lugu Shao. In China and Korea, it is more often known as the July 7th Incident. Chapter 2, Background Tensions between the Empire of Japan and the Republic of China had been heightened since the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931 and their subsequent creation of a puppet state, Montukuo, with Pui, the deposed Qing dynasty emperor, as its head. Following the invasion, Japanese forces extended their control further into northern China, seeking to obtain raw materials and industrial capacity. A commission of inquiry from the League of Nations made the scathing Lipton report into their actions, leading to Japan pulling out of the League. The Kuomintang government of China refused to recognize Montukuo but did agree to the Tongu truce with Japan in 1933. Subsequently, there were various incidents, or armed clashes of a limited nature, followed by a return to uneasy peace. The significance of the Marco Polo Bridge incident is that following it, tensions did not subside again, instead, there was an escalation, with larger forces committed by both sides and fighting spreading to other parts of China. With hindsight, this small incident can, therefore, be regarded as the starting point of a major conflict. Under the terms of the Boxer Protocol of 7 September 1901, China had granted nations with legations in Beijing the right to station guards at 12 specific points along railways connecting Beijing with Tianjin. This was to ensure open communications between the capital and the port. By a supplementary agreement on 15 July 1902, these forces were allowed to conduct maneuvers without informing the authorities of other nations in China. By July 1937, Japan had expanded its forces in China to an estimated 7,000 to 15,000 men, mostly along the railways. This number of men, and the amount of concomitant materiel, was several times the size of the detachments deployed by the European powers, and greatly in excess of the limits set by the Boxer Protocol. By this time, the Imperial Japanese Army had already surrounded Beijing and Tianjin. On the night of 7 July, the Japanese units stationed at Fengtai crossed the border to conduct military exercises. Japanese and Chinese forces outside the town of Wanping, a walled, town 16.4 kilometers southwest of Beijing, exchanged fire at approximately 2300 hours. The exact cause of this incident remains unknown. When a Japanese soldier, Private Shimura Kikujiro, failed to return to his post, Chinese regimental commander Ji Zingwen received a message from the Japanese demanding permission to enter Wanping to search for the missing soldier, the Chinese flatly refused. Although Private Shimura returned to his unit, by this point both sides were mobilizing, 
with the Japanese deploying reinforcements to surround Wanping. Later that night, a unit of Japanese infantry attempted to breach Wanping's walled defenses but were repulsed. An ultimatum by the Japanese was issued two hours later. As a precautionary measure, Chin Deacon, the acting commander of the Chinese 29th Route Army, contacted the commander of the Chinese 37th Division, General Feng Xian, ordering him to place his troops on heightened alert. Chapter 3 Incident At two o'clock in the morning of the 8th of July, Chin Deacon, executive officer and acting commander of the Chinese 29th Route Army, sent Wang Lengshai, mayor of Wanping, alone to the Japanese camp to conduct negotiations. However, this proved to be fruitless, and the Japanese insisted that they be admitted into the town to investigate the cause of the incident. At around four o'clock, reinforcements of both sides began to arrive. The Chinese also rushed an extra division of troops to the area. About an hour or so later the Chinese army opened fire on the Japanese army and attacked them at Marco Polo Bridge west-southwest of Wanping, as well as at a modern railway bridge north of Marco Polo Bridge. At 4.45 Wang Lengshai had returned to Wanping, and on his way back he witnessed Japanese troops massing around the town. Within five minutes of Wang's return, the Chinese army fired shots, thus marking the commencement of the Battle of Biaping Tianjin, and, by extension, the full-scale commencement of the Second Sino-Japanese War at 4.50 on 8 July 1937. Colonel Ji Zingwen led the Chinese defenses with about 100 men, with orders to hold the bridge at all costs. The Chinese were able to hold the bridge with the help of reinforcements, but suffered tremendous losses. At this point, the Japanese military and members of the Japanese Foreign Service began negotiations in Beijing with the Chinese nationalist government. A verbal agreement with Chinese General Qin was reached, whereby an apology would be given by the Chinese to the Japanese. Punishment would be dealt to those responsible. Control of Wanping would be turned over to the Hopei Chinese Civilian Constabulary and not to the Chinese 219th Regiment. The Chinese would attempt to better control communists in the area. This was agreed upon, though Japanese Garrison Infantry Brigade Commander General Masakazu Kawabe initially rejected the truce and, against his superior's orders, continued to shell Wanping for the next three hours, until prevailed upon to cease and to move his forces to the northeast. Chapter 4 Aftermath Although a ceasefire had been declared, further efforts to de escalate the conflict failed largely due to actions by the Chinese Communists and the Japanese China Garrison Army Commanders. Due to constant Chinese attacks, Japanese Garrison Infantry Brigade Commander General Masakazu Kawabe ordered Wanping to be shelled on 9 July. The following day, Japanese armored units joined the attack. The Chinese 219th Regiment staged an effective resistance, and full-scale fighting commenced at Longfong on 25 July. After launching a bitter and bloody attack on the Japanese lines on 27 July, General Sung was defeated and forced to retreat behind the Yongding River by the next day. Chapter 4 Section 1 Battle of Biaping Tianjin On the 11th of July, in accordance with the Goso Conference, the Imperial Japanese Army General Staff authorized the deployment of an infantry division from the Chosen Army, two combined brigades from the Kwantum Army and an air regiment composed of 18 squadrons as reinforcements to northern China. By 20 July, total Japanese military strength in the Biaping Tianjin area exceeded 180,000 personnel. The Japanese gave Sung and his troops free passage before moving into pacify resistance in areas surrounding Beijing and Tianjin. After 24 days of combat, the Chinese 29th Corps was forced to withdraw. The Japanese captured Biaping and the Taku forts at Tianjin on 29 and 30 July respectively, thus concluding the Biaping Tianjin campaign. However, the Japanese army had been given orders not to advance further than the Yongling River. In a sudden volte face, the Konoe government's foreign minister opened negotiations with Chiang Kai-shek's government in Nanking and stated, Japan wants Chinese cooperation, not Chinese land. Nevertheless, negotiations failed to move further. 
On 9 August 1937, a Japanese naval officer was shot in Shanghai, escalating the skirmishes and battles into full-scale warfare. The 29th Army's resistance inspired the 1937 Sword March, which, with slightly reworked lyrics, became the National Revolutionary Army's standard marching cadence and popularized the racial epithet Gitsi to describe the Japanese invaders. Chapter 5 – Consequences The heightened tensions of the Marco Polo Bridge incident led directly to full-scale war between the Empire of Japan and the Republic of China, with the Battle of Biaping Tianjin at the end of July and the Battle of Shanghai in August. In 1937, during the Battle of Biaping Tianjin the Chinese government was notified by Muslim General Ma Biafang of the Ma clique that he was prepared to bring the fight to the Japanese in a telegram message. Immediately after the Marco Polo Bridge incident, Ma Biafang arranged for a cavalry division under the Muslim General Ma Biao to be sent east to battle the Japanese. Ethnic Turkic Solar Muslims made up the majority of the 1st Cavalry Division which was sent by Ma July 7, 1937 is sometimes given as an alternative starting date for World War II. In 1987, the bridge was renovated and the People's Anti-Japanese War Museum was built near the bridge to commemorate the anniversary of the start of the Sino-Japanese War. Chapter 6 – Controversies there is debate over whether the incident could have been planned like the earlier Mukden incident, which served as a pretext for the Japanese invasion of Manchuria. According to Jim Huffman this notion has been widely rejected by historians, as the Japanese would likely have been more concerned over the threat posed by the Soviets. Controversial conservative Japanese historian Ikuhiko Hata has suggested that the incident could have been caused by the Chinese Communist Party, hoping it would lead to a war of attrition between the Japanese army and the Kuomintang. However, he himself still considers this less likely than the accidental shot hypothesis, that the first shot was fired by a low-ranking Chinese soldier in an unplanned moment of fear. Chapter 7 – Order of Battle Chapter 7 – Section 1 – National Revolutionary Army In comparison to their Japanese counterparts, the 29th Root Army, and generally all of the NRA for that matter, was poorly equipped and undertrained. Most soldiers were armed only with a rifle and a dao. Moreover, the Chinese garrison in the Lugaokao area, was completely outnumbered and outgunned, it consisted only of about 100 soldiers. Chapter 7 Section 2 – Imperial Japanese Army the Japanese China Garrison Army was a combined force of infantry, tanks, mechanized forces, artillery and cavalry, which had been stationed in China since the time of the Boxer Rebellion. Its headquarters and bulk for its forces were in Tianjin, with a major detachment in Beijing to protect the Japanese embassy. Chapter 7 Section 3 – Sources Dawn, Frank The Sino-Japanese War 1937-41, From Marco Polo Bridge to Pearl Harbor. Macmillan. ISBN 0025032201. Drybra, Marjorie. North China and Japanese Expansion 1933-1937, Regional Power and the National Interest. Rotledge Curzon. ISBN 0707274-7. Lou, David J. From the Marco Polo Bridge to Pearl Harbor, A Study of Japan's Entry into World War II. Public Affairs Press. ASIN B 6 mfq Fuya, KG. The Riddle of the Marco Polo Bridge, To Verify the First Shot. Symposium on the History of the Republic of China. ASIN B0007G7I.